Hey stupid, congrats, you've actually landed on the right side of YouTube for once, and in today's video, I'm literally going to break down what's been working in AI automation right now after me being three years of hard work in it. Um, the video is gonna be pretty simple. By the end, I'm gonna do a market analysis. I'm gonna go through my current funnel in full detail, and I'm gonna have some final thoughts too on how you can progress. So before I continue, you're probably thinking, why should I listen to this guy, and why is he so handsome? Well, I'm glad you asked. Uh, my name is Sam Ramey. I was making around 250K in investment banking. I decided to leave my job one day and make videos on ChatGPT. It ended up working out really well. And I was able to use that social media engagement to build a custom AI automation studio and simply scale, which I exited out in December, and a voice platform, which I just exited out in June. I've been a guest coach for Ty Lopez's community. I've had the wonderful chance to connect with individuals like Dan Martell. And I've been invited to speak at one of the largest AI conferences in the world. Traveled the world. I went to El Salvador. I went to Las Vegas with my friend Hamza Automates. I've been to Dubai many times. And now, currently, I'm building nextcallagent.io. It's my own custom AI studio with a specialty on AI voice agents. But I won't bore you with the details. Let's get straight into it. Things. They're too cash strapped. They're unsophisticated. They don't even know. They don't even know if it'll work. They have no idea how it works. They're scared their employees won't know how to, how to use it. Stupid. Um, basic automation. So I see a lot of like people on Instagram, a lot of people on LinkedIn. NNN workflows, go high level basics, chat bots, like anybody talks to anybody on a website, like they'll talk to a chat bot. No, it's just it's not a real thing. And people show these big graphics, it doesn't matter. It doesn't convert. If you're looking to make money off clients, that's not going to do it. Um, low monthly retainers, you'll just get beat on price. I find like so many people are like, hey, I want 50 clients at 100 bucks a month, then I'll make my money. No, you don't want a bunch of clients that's a bunch of people always hitting your phone always bothering you and if the only reason they signed with you is because you're affordable i guarantee you there's a guy in india or pakistan that'll do it way cheaper than you and probably better so don't try to go after a low price uh choosing a niche right away it's so stupid people try to like find these new problems and these new industries where they think they can come in and do it no just go general first and then niche down relying on paid ads at the beginning how are you going to do how are you going to pay an advertisement for something that you don't even know works and it's not even naturally getting clients it doesn't make sense ads are always amplification um quick no value tunnels i see so many guys like hey i made the solution book a call with my agency no people reward things people that give them something it's the law of reciprocation it's what i typically do i'm going to walk you through my funnel um, and then just basic value. You can't just say uh, chat GPT can do this and we can set up a custom GPT for your company. No one cares. Like it has to be something unique and the delivery has to be unique. Um, and more kind of in-depth reasons why I think all of these are kind of in the market. It's because most AI coaches are gay scammers. It's, it's a real thing. They push technical knowledge and empty builds. Trust me, a client does not know what an N8 N workflow is and they don't care. They just want to know how they can make money and how their team can use it and how it can actually be put into their business. And if the cost is going to be less than what they're going to get out of it, maybe in the long term, maybe in the short term. Um, pushing cold outreach. This is terrible. Why would you do the same method that every other agency is doing and you're trying to differentiate yourself and you're going to somebody and begging them to work for them? I, I never believed in this method and I still don't. Um, pushing done for you systems for every client. There's a couple guys that do this, especially Jordan Lee. It's the biggest scam. They basically say, oh, we'll set up your leads for you and we'll set up your email system. Uh, they're doing that for like 10 other students and they're charging like 20K for this stuff. But think, they're doing that for 10 other students. So everyone's getting the same leads. Everyone's doing the same messaging. Obviously, the meth is not going to work. Um, pushing super outdated software. Go high level Zapier. Like, there's no reason why any business should be using these. But it's very profitable for a lot of these guys. Either they have brand deals or they, they make money on the affiliate stuff on Go High Level or they've already white labeled it. I fully get it. Don't get me wrong. But this is why they're scamming. Um, and then finally, this is the funniest shit because I actually have AI influencers and coaches in my program. And I'll tell you, they've actually never ran a proper build for a company. They've either just done coaching or they, they've maybe done some small projects, but they've never done like a substantial build where they're going into a business. It's hilarious. Um, apart from the influence from these, I think this is what's actually stopping a lot of people. And this is probably the most important part of the video. If you're gonna clip this, do it now. Um, a lot of you guys have no life story. So you're 18, you're fresh out of high school, or you're maybe 25 and you never, you've never done anything. 
but you'd be surprised. You've actually done a lot of things. You just don't know how to frame it. Um, number two, you're a dopamine addict. So many people. I have so many coaching students that literally join my program that never do anything. They just pay me up front. Moronic. Um, number three, you suck at marketing. None of this build stuff matters if no one knows or no one hears you or no one sees you. And it's very common. And an addition to that, you suck at sales. So you might actually have the marketing and bring the people in and be able to get them on call, but you're not confident enough. You're simply not an expert and you don't need to be an expert. You just need to sound like one. And your prioritization is an all time low. I see this every day. I see people making websites when no one knows them. I see, I, I know a guy that literally didn't have a LinkedIn profile, but he had a full crazy agency website. And he's like, oh, they're gonna be so impressed by the website. No one cares and no one can find your website, you loser. So don't try that shit. But you're probably saying, Sam, AI coaches are gay scammers. Don't you do coaching? And you're goddamn right. And that brings me to my one-on-one -on -one program. I'll walk you through. It's pretty simple. It's no pressure because I don't really care and I don't need the money as much anymore. Um, I show you how to land your first 5K deal and how to repeat it. You get access to 100 developers for any fulfillment on your projects that I probably give you and my network of influencers, SMMAs, SEO, email experts. All these people are typically rev share too. So they only get results. Um, you can also partner and take on my deals directly. Thankfully, I've been blessed enough that my agency does really well, that I can take the outflow or the extra deals and pass it over to students that are actually not retarded, which is more rare than you think. Um, and then just a personalized roadmap with unlimited catch-ups. If you want to talk to me every day, you can. Most people don't, most people it's not needed, but I require a mandatory one meeting a week. I'm here to keep you accountable and actually make sure you succeed because your success is a case study for me and more case studies, more coaching students, more money, everything. It's great for me and it's great for you. And you get to copy my exact methods since it's one-on-one, -on -one, I'm not teaching to a thousand people. I don't mind giving it to 40, 50, 100 people even because I know most people won't execute. But back to it, I went on what's not working. How about I go over what's actually working? So you wanna target high leverage, medium sized business. And I'll go through that in the criteria here. Cash rich, volume heavy, time starved, law, finance, wellness, trades. These companies are the ones actually making money. Not fucking real estate agents. Selling outcome driven systems. You want a system that will do something specific that can easily be interpreted to the business owner. Hey, you're gonna have more of your calls answered. Hey, your stuff's gonna be more organized. Hey, your deal flow will be cleaner and your funnels won't be guessed anymore. It won't be a random follow-up. It'll be at seven days, 12 days, 14 days. Every client will get the same information in the funnel, which is very necessary. Um, charging premium setup fees and performance upside. A lot of you guys are afraid to charge even 2K, 3K for a job. You wanna just do a monthly or rev share. I charge 10K and it's easier to close 10K than it is for 2K. Because if you charge 2K, people start getting, oh, maybe this guy's not that good. They're not that professional. When you charge 10K, some people will say, oh, that's too expensive. These guys are, but other people, especially the clients I target and my ideal target criteria, they're in fucking love. They're like, all right, that's what I expected. Yeah, that's because they're used to getting 25, 40K, 50K charges for agencies. So 10K looks like a deal. And you can even load that with bonuses if you really need, if you're really greedy. I'm not that greedy, so I don't do it. But I usually add on a, a maintenance retainer of some sort just to make sure I can go back in, help them out whenever they need, and then offer them support and, and as they build. Building an offer, then finding a niche. This is what you should do. You should have an offer, which I, I'll kind of go through here, but then finding the niche. See who's naturally attracted to you and see if you can find trends within that. Uh, organic first, then paid later. You literally need to do this and no one wants to do this. And this is why no one's making money. That's why like maybe the 1% are even those coaches I told you about, they make money off of their social media engagement, just like me. And it's, it's, it's the most honest formula. Full value ladders. This is really smart. So a lot of people like to just go from video to call or email to call. That doesn't work anymore. What I do is I'll send over lead magnets, demos, cheat sheets, smaller offers, coaching offers. Then they have a company like I'm giving them so much value up front that they're like, wait a minute, I, I might, I might be smart to work with this guy just cause he's given me so much for free already. I wonder what his pay stuff's like. And I just want to finally go over kind of the offer framework is ultra simple. And I think a lot of you guys need to understand this doesn't sell, but this will sell. Why is it? because these are dashboards, these are CRMs, these are analytics. This is all of this backend stuff is put onto a better front end where they can monitor. 
people will pay 10 believe it or not people pay 10 to 50k for stuff like this but they'll only pay a, a thousand two thousand three thousand for this because they think it's just that but you can bake all of these into this and it's presented properly and it's automated and you'll make a lot of money believe it or not uh, and just to go in a bit more detail on what's work and what i would recommend this is your ideal target criteria for clients. If you don't follow this, you're a moron. Because I'll break down why the other ones aren't good. First of all, the local shops, they don't have any money. They don't have any sophistication. They're going to haggle you. They don't even know. They don't find you typically. They're just not serious. Think of it. If a company is making 20K, 30K a month, why would they spend 5K on, on something? That's a, that's a big amount of their money. That might be the owner's profit. Whereas a company is making, let's say, 1 to 10 mil revenue, that's around 100K to a million a month, 10K for them, even if it doesn't work out, if it, make, if it has a chance of making the money, they'll for sure do it. They have 10 to 50 employees, higher the better. Amazing. More things to automate, more people to fire. That's how these business owners actually think. Ad budgets. I look for 10K plus. Because if I know they're putting 10K into ads, they're making some type of return, and they're willing to invest in things to make more money. They have that mentality. They're not just a lazy company that waits on everything inbound. Uh, inbound lead flow that goes straight from the ad budgets and maybe their organic social media performance already ran some light automation CRM. This is really good because they have experience with it. They get it. They want to go to the next level. You're the guy to take them there and venture back investment back. Obviously they have fresh money. They have to spend it. They have to spend it fast and they want to partner with you because you're the expert. Um, just going over some of the best builds in the market right now, uh, custom CRMs. No one wants to do this. This is all I do. Not all I do, but a good amount make a lot of money doing it. And I think a lot of you should as well. Um, voice agent infrastructure and integrated into zero. It's the best add on. It's the most cool product. It's very hands on. They get to use it. And then I'd also go like custom GPTs and onboarding processes. And then you flip them onto like a lovable or a bolt, which is just the front end. It's going to look good, but funnel still sell. It's how you bring AI into the business, not the AI that, that is the star. It's how it's helping. And that's all they care about. Um, Pricing strategies, I'll be honest with you. I've spoken to some of the best agency owners. We don't have a magic formula. You don't bring an ROI chart to the client and go, oh, I'm going to save you 14 hours a week. And no, the client doesn't think like that. You have to read the room. So this is what I typically think. It's a long sales cycle. So just start the process. A lot of times it takes three to six months. Most of my clients come back to me after a couple months and say, hey, we're ready now. Let's do it. So I don't, I don't bother them too much. Uh, in that case... If you're starting your agency today and you want the sales cycle to start, you have to start it today. You'll probably make clients in three months or two months or a month, whatever. But you keep going on this outreach and inbound cycle where it doesn't matter if you have to wait three months. The cycle's already started. You're getting new clients and past clients every month. Um, I'd also remind people to get started. A lot of people are really busy and they have the money and they just forget. So just give them a nudge. Act, act like they're being stupid by not starting. I do it all the time. Um, anchor your price. Always bid higher because A, they might just say yes. And B, they say, oh, that's too high. You give them the theory of a discount, which is what everyone does in sales, including my clients. My clients even know I do this most times. Um, and then four, it's the Arami method. This is something I made up, but a lot of high-end agency owners do use this, is when work is low, let's say a client project's got finished, I was on a vacation, it's kind of, let's say I have no jobs. Well, I'm going to, that first guy that wants to onboard next, I'm going to give a very favorable price because I want money through the door. The second guy, a little less, and as it goes on, up to like five, honestly, up to like three or four clients just because we, we do charge a lot. Uh, the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth clients, I either pass over to my students and my coaching or I'll just price them ridiculous. And sometimes they just accept which is insane to me, but that's the method. When you're not busy, price affordably. When you're really busy, price expensive, because then you can always anchor what you're doing and get back to them. When you're not busy, you can be like, hey, we just had a developer open up a spot for the week. Would you like to join on? I'll even give you a 25% discount. Still make your money. So, you know, I've, I've harped on these influencers now. I've harped on people doing stupid methods in the market, and I'm going to show you my current funnel and what I believe is the only method for being successful in agency and coaching, whatever. It's just marketing and specifically inbound marketing. If you can do this, you can hit the 20, the 50, the 100K months very easily. And then you can amplify it with growth operators, paid ads, whatever. I won't even get into that this video. But here's my current funnel and it's ultra simple, but I need you.
to stay stay with me. And if you have any questions, don't ask them yet. Simple. It's Instagram impressions and LinkedIn content performance. I then whatever from those posts, I have a keyword, which then sends them a lead magnet on Notion, on Google Doc, wherever you may go. And then you go right into the calendar. This works. Sometimes I have to send four or five lead magnets, then the person's like, all right. But in the long term, this method works. The specifics I'll go on later, but this is all you need to know. You need to be able to generate this. And you're probably going to say, oh, Sam, how do I generate this? Trust me, the methods are a lot easier. And I'd say it's easier on LinkedIn now, especially if you're in the know, than it is on Instagram, which is always just random. Here's my actual funnel. When they do book in that call after this funnel, I'll have them trigger in. It goes into my CRM on Airtable. I then send a pre-call email, which will be whatever case study I like. And then just a, hey, excited to chat. I also send two calendar reminders and text reminders from the cal.com app, which is 24 hours before and two hours before. It ensures they have the links and everything. And during the call, it's very simple. Where are they at now? Where do they want to go? What's missing and broken? And how can I fix that and aim that? Um, and then post-call email, I send the meeting summary. I send a booking link for follow-up and demo. Pretty simple. Sometimes I do it. Most of the times it's automated and I have it done pretty well. But um, if someone's not really that serious, I don't want to work with them. I just don't send it. Um, my proposal before the second call or I show the proposal on, this, on, on the call itself. I like it before. It warms them up. It lets them know. Sometimes they also send me the scope and then I can just merely, you know, price them based on the scope. Second call is just a walk through the proposal and the demo. Basic ROI calculation. I don't believe in that as I told you. And then just any final questions and developing the relationship there. It's really that simple. And a lot of people will always complicate it. I think it's so stupid. But next, I just have my final thoughts overall on, on what you should be doing, what you should be focused on. And if you have half a brain, like you can follow most of the stuff in this video. Number one, it's just marketing. The best coaches, the best agency owners, they're just better marketers. You do not need any technical expertise anymore. I literally do my project builds with chat GPT right next to me. And then if something gets very complicated or I physically can't do it, I have a group of developers that I literally put into a group chat and I have them fight on price against each other. This is the best because the human competition, especially among males, forces them to get me the best price and the best work because they know if they fuck up, it's not only money they lose, they lose potential future jobs to guys that are just as qualified, if not more qualified. Number three, it's all about ideas and how you present them. It goes back to marketing, but ideas matter. Being able to, in the middle of a call, being like, okay, cool. This client's having CRM issues, this and that. We'll make an AI CRM. We'll make an AI custom to their website, even though it's just a custom GPT with a lovable front end. You have to have ideas and you have to be able to communicate them and express them. Uh, this is an actually a cool one. It's systemizing early and then leveraging everything gradually. So being able to create your CRM right away, even before you're really busy, is a very, very good thing. Um, number five, especially when you're at the lower end of the scale, when you're smaller marketing-wise, and you're smaller just overall earlier in your agency process, give, give, give. Don't be afraid to, to give information, especially if you're small. When you get bigger, you can do whatever you want, right? But at the start, make sure you're giving as much value as possible, and you're probably going to be doing jobs at discounts. You just have to admit it. Not too much of a discount, but just a little bit. Don't scratch your own itch. This is so common, and a lot of people fuck this up. They see a problem, or their friend tells them something, and they assume, oh, every realtor has that problem, or every HVAC shop has that problem. I'm going to make the solution. I'm going to do everything. Don't do that. Actually hear it from a bunch of different sources. Don't take an anecdotal evidence and be like, okay, cool. That's the main thing. I'm going to go after that. That's retarded. Please do not do that. And then finally, this is my most important advice, and I still have an issue with a lot of my coaching students that do this. Take on more than you can chew. Don't be afraid to take on a project that's 4,000, 5,000, 10,000. First project I took on was 55,000. You think I knew exactly what to do? No, but I figured it out, and that's what's most important. And if you did watch all the way to the end, I just wanted to personally thank you so much for taking the time to learn. And if you have any questions, all the relevant links are below. And I always like to end this off with my favorite quote, may you never let success get to your head and failure to your heart. And as always, I go by the name of Sam Ramey.